Well, here we are in Florida. It's April 3rd. We're not quite to that cycle where it rains every afternoon at 3 o'clock until 4 o'clock. But it starts soon and it goes almost to October. We'll see how this year goes. I overseeded my yard for some bare areas, knowing the rain was coming. We'll see how that works. Maybe it all washes into the lake. And you're listening to Ibiza Global Radio on TuneIn. Hopefully this sample with commentary won't cause a copyright strike. If so, I guess I'll have to cut it out and do voiceover audio later. This is the Insta360 action camera attached to a selfie stick, which I've wedged between the driver's seat and the console. This is really not the heaviest part of the storm. Looking at the radar on the ForeFlight app, the main part of the storm starts maybe about five miles from here coming up from behind and to the right. So it should be here soon. Might be a good day to park inside the garage. This shows you the radar. We're headed more or less south. Southwest, I guess. And here in South Kissimmee, the storm is roughly over I 4. LAL is Lakeland. GIF is Winter Haven. So I'll go ahead and activate the full self driving says it may be degraded because poor weather is detected. So we'll see how it works. The weather, of course, affects how well the cameras are able to see. You don't hear it talked about a lot, but the really amazing thing to me about the full self driving is that it can work so well at night. We can expand the view of what the computer is thinking about. It shows you the world that it's driving in. It tries to pay attention to everything it thinks might potentially move or become a threat. So this, of course, includes pedestrians, traffic cones, even garbage cans on the side of the road. Bicycles, motorcycles, animals, whatever. Open a Tribeca, the ultimate day club experience. Choose from daily poolside events for every music taste and mood, from house and disco music's finest to hip hop and R&B. Immersive entertainment, fusion Mediterranean cuisine, and iconic backdrop. 
We didn't invent the pool party, we just perfected it. Advanced bookings recommended at obchibita.com. You are listening to Beach Beats on Vita Global Radio and Los 40 Dance. José Manuel Duro presents Beach Beats. En el Ecuador de la semana tenemos música para ti, sesiones desde luego muy especiales de artistas increíbles. Abrimos la ventana de Ibiza al mundo. Igor Mari Juan, que está ahí pendiente de todo lo que hacemos aquí en Beach Beats. Hoy nos va a presentar como todos los días so we're getting a little closer to the weather front, well, the line of thunderstorms. Ofrece ese sonido especial que tiene que ver con el disco, con el funk, con el indie y con la música house. Oímos su sesión en la próxima hora. It's a Visa Global Radio Station. I think they have an on the air version as well as the stream version. It's an island in the Mediterranean that belongs to Spain. So when you hear the Spanish, they're speaking uh, Spain Spanish, which is pronounced a little bit different than the Latin American Spanish that is most common in Florida. But about half our programming is in English, usually with a British accent. I guess because they know they have a worldwide audience. The nice thing about this Ibiza music is you can multitask because it's not that distracting if you're working on something else, like on the computer or writing or charting. mostly about the instrumentals and if there are words just think of them as other instruments because I don't know that anybody really pays attention to the lyrics if there are lyrics You'll notice that while I'm ready to take control of the wheel at any time the software acts up, it's not constantly molesting me every 30 seconds to touch the wheel. Like previous versions of the software did, this is version 12.3.3, which just installed yesterday in my case. With the rain, the temperatures dropped from 82 down to 69, according to the car. So that's the first time it asked me to touch the wheel. You have to do a little more than touch it. You have to pull it just a little bit so it knows you're there. Of course, if you pull the wheel too much, it'll disconnect the autopilot. So it's just a little nudge, or you can just raise or lower the volume on the radio and it'll see you. Uh, we're in a weak spot of the storm, but we're inside the line of storms now. Nextrad radio radar that we see either in the airplane from satellite or ground station links or that you get by the internet is usually at least five minutes old. And most of the time it's 15 minutes old, which you see on the Weather Channel because they make people pay for the more recent content. So sometimes the storm it shows on the way to you has already passed you. So you have to take into account that lag, especially when flying. It doesn't usually matter that much driving, but 
if you don't realize there's a delay, beach. Beach. you could make some bad decisions about where or when to fly. Uh, notice here the FSD has decided not to stop on the train tracks. That's a plus. There's a Sunrail train at the station here, which is a in-town commuter train. There's only one track right now, but it starts here at Poinciana, which is the southern end of the route and ends up in Deltona, which is up north of Orlando past Sanford on the way to Daytona. It's very inexpensive, but they don't run on holidays or weekends and they don't run overnight. So they end somewhere around eight o'clock at night. Maybe sometime when the weather's nice, so we'll take a train ride and video some of that, show how it is. There are lots of stops, but it's not much slower than driving. And as long as you're going somewhere along the route, it could be useful. Save wear and tear and gas on the car because it's very inexpensive. That train is not to be confused with the Bright Line, which is the one that runs from Orlando to Miami, which goes upwards of 100 miles an hour, at least on the segment between the Orlando International Airport Terminal C and where it makes the big turn onto the older tracks in the vicinity of Cocos, Florida. The rest of the route, it goes up in the 70 mile an hour range, but it's older tracks. There are actually some crossings. So it still takes about three and a half hours, even if it goes non-stop. That was an autopilot commanded uh, lane change. So if somebody was closing on us in the fast lane. road narrows back to two lanes up ahead, so we'll have to get over to the left at some point. We've got about another mile on the two lane section. There are a lot of accidents in this area where the road changes to two lanes because everybody's in a hurry that drives to Point Siena. Plus, there are a lot of, uh, I don't know, in South Carolina, we call them rednecks, but they're teenagers or people that drive like teenagers, most of them in little Honda Civics that they think are sports cars, that they've modified them to make more noise through the exhaust system. I'm not sure who thought a Honda Civics was a sports car, but they like to drive that way and make a lot of noise. And, show that they're not afraid to run 70 miles an hour and do illegal passing and die in head-on collisions. And they're certainly a hazard to other people. So we're getting close to the range where we need to change lanes. After this light, it's going to narrow. Hello? Hello? Yes? You just call my phone? Nope. What do you mean? Yeah, I'm just calling the number back. Well, sorry. No calls going okay. out.
interesting. Somebody thought they got a phone call from me. Obviously, I wasn't making any calls. And I got the video evidence. I should have told them it was Osama bin Laden. As you can see, they're getting ready to widen this road to at least four lanes to try to help with traffic, which is really a bear in this area. Something like 70,000 people lived in the uh, collection of neighborhoods known as Poinciana. It's not even a city, but there are roughly 10,000 housing units under construction right now, and really only like three roads going in and out of the area. And most of the people who live down here work up in Orlando. So there's a daily exodus to the north, and in the afternoon they're all coming back home. So this roadbed's going to be basically mud for the next few days, looks like. They're already packing it down and flattening it out, but I think they're going to need to elevate it some because it's right on the edge of a swamp, so it's going to be very flood prone if they leave it down that low. Probably need to bring in some rocks and some dirt or something. Otherwise, they're going to have to elevate the roadbed. So, much harder rain now. The autopilot's still managing the FSD software, but it does say it's potentially degraded. At least we're not very high speed thanks to traffic. And look at them, they're still working in the mud over there. And I see a water pump. I need to reapply some rain X once the car dries off a little bit. Because it sure works better than windshield wipers. Pretty much everybody in the South should be using rain X. It's a pretty impressive product if you've never tried it. If I remember, I'll put a link to Rainex in the description. And of course, they're not a sponsor. But hey, they could be. They give me a call. So I notice on the display, it's staying on the left side of the lane, close to the stripes, maybe to avoid these construction cones. Or maybe just because the right edge of the road is not as distinct. Uh, it's kind of moving back towards the middle now that we have a, a painted stripe to mark the right edge of the lane. So we need this left turn lane, and uh, he's trying to think about it, but yeah, here we go. I think he saw the car behind us trying to make the turn first. I don't know why it's going so slow here, so I gave it a little nudge on the gas. Call it gas. Accelerator pedal. The car behind looked like he was getting impatient. So let's see if we'll make this turn. Time to go. Yes, sir. I guess the yellow flashing light made it slow down well in advance of the intersection. Okay, we're in a right turn lane, but it needs to move over just a smidge. And I got a little bit close. The lanes are a little funny there. It's kind of hugging the right of the lane right now. On beat of Yerbu Radio and Los Quarenta Dance. Four sixteen PM. Yeah, 
Okay, it's a little curvy in the road here. Might be a good time to slow down, given how wet it is. And it kind of slid off the lane a little bit to the right. So the speed limit's 45 and we're going 40, but I'm not sure that speed limit's really correct. straight shot now but anyway that's enough to give you a flavor of it driving the rain so I'll go ahead and end the video now don't forget to like the channel or subscribe to the channel like the video share the video if you know somebody curious about the full self-driving of the Tesla model 3 version 12.3.3 till next time see you later Driving too fast for conditions on a curvy road in the rain, maybe missed a speed limit sign and ran a little bit off the road on the right side or off the lane anyway. So when you disconnect the autopilot, it always asks why. So I give a little feedback so they can work on that.